Um, what signs should we look for as far as recognizing stress and anxiety of girls mm -hmm. so that then we are in the position mm -hmm. to help them recognize it themselves? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some universals to anxiety, especially. Anxiety, mm -hmm. um, you know, as you know, is it's a fairly rudimentary emotion. It's not a particularly sophisticated emotion. It's really, you know, generated by the most primitive aspect of the brain. And so anxiety is, you know, when your heart rate accelerates, when there's physical tension, some kids feel queasy in their stomachs. A lot of people have this experience of their chest tightening. Those are the physical signs of anxiety. Um, some kids will then, adults will then talk about, you know, their tension in their stomach that really is hard to shake, um, difficulty sleeping, a sense of jumpiness, edginess. Those are the, um, you know, the surface symptoms of anxiety. And I think the posture we want to have when we can notice that in our child or the child notices it in themselves is to say, okay, where's it coming from? Like, what's the story of this anxiety? You know, that something's ringing your alarm let's pay attention, you know, that there's, there's a reason this is happening. And that position of saying like, there's a reason for this. And when we understand the reason, then this will, we'll know what to do. That's where we want to get and where we've been as a culture. And this is where I think we're in, can get ourselves in trouble is we're like, oh, no, you're anxious, make it stop. Like, yeah, that's bad, or that's borderline diagnosable. No, no, we only diagnose anxiety under two conditions. One, if it's showing up and nothing's wrong, so you still want to find out what's wrong. Or two, if it's way too big for what's wrong. You know, if a kid has a presentation and they're having a panic attack, we don't want that. But otherwise, curiosity and empathy will solve most of what we consider to be a problematic anxiety.